Alrighty, so we are back with another episode of the Smokescreen Podcast. <laughs> this is number number six, I think. I think it feels like number six. Yeah, so we had to take a couple of weeks off, but uh, did did a Game of Thrones. But we were talking last night, and we were like, we, we got to we got to talk about Game of Thrones. We have to. It, it's just it's splitting the fandom, in, I mean, just a billion pieces. Yeah, it seems like daily I'm reading arguments for one side or the other you know yeah i think the basic arguments are they've always said she's going this way we always knew it and it was a 180 turn and they're nobody's wrong right they're agreed <laughs> they're both right <laughs> you know um i mean i hate it and but like i said in the review video i, I mean on one hand there were things put in their show and books to say, you know, Mad Queen's coming, right? But I agree at the same time that it was not done properly in the show because they kept reeling her back in. You know, obviously we're talking about Danny going Mad Queen, yeah. burning King's Landing, becoming the, the the tyrant she was trying to depose of. But, uh, yeah, they put the stuff in there, but they, her, they always reeled her back in and made you think it was more of a red herring and that Cersei was the Mad Queen, which she was too. Yeah. But... um. No, we got we got the we got what we hate we hate uh, I believe, and that is a a disappointing ending. Regardless of how it was written in the show, it's going to be the same. It's such a huge beat in the books. I think it's going to be the same. So I guess the question boils down to: Do we really love uh, you know tragedies? Right. You know. You know? Well, she yeah. She's just the uh, she's the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, a lot of characters haven't unfolded. Oh yeah, yeah. Quite. Yeah. So neatly, you know. No doubt. I mean, you, you had issues. Obviously, this is episode five. We're talking about one to go to see if there's any remaining twist or whatever. Can we get any sweetness out of this bitter? I don't think we can, regardless of what happens. But I think no, I can't. I don't think you can because it is, in fact, the last episode. So it's already inherently bitter. Y yes, you know? that is true. For people to pull away something really positive, it, I mean, it, it almost take a miracle. Yes, I agree, and I don't. I mean, I don't know if this third twist was Danny. I don't know. I, I think they said it was at the end of the season, so this is kind of the end of the season. I don't know what that means, or if they'll even tell us. But I don't know if anything can get more shocking than this. You know, um, obviously they're setting up John versus Danny. I yeah, mean, that's just obviously where they're going. There's no redemption for her. We said this on no. the live stream. There, there's no redemption for her, and that's heartbreaking in itself. Um, Yes. I, I grew to love her, grew to believe in her, just like everybody else did. And, I mean, that didn't mean that I was going to be disappointed if, you know, she died and didn't wind up on the throne or whatever happened if she, you know. But this is tough because I I almost want her to, to die now. and uh, And I don't know that. I felt that way other than your Joffreys and your Ramseys. Right, yeah. I mean, she she can't recover from this. You, there's no justification. She'll probably come out next episode with the, with the episode six preview teaser and try to justify it in some way. And, you know, I, I, I guess some of the argument, too, is, you know, we keep saying Mad Queen. And, and I think that's probably not the right term. A lot of people have an issue on – on Twitter, I've seen a lot of stuff about the the word "mad" being used. She's not crazy, and how it reflects real life mental illness. And we're not talking about all that stuff. This is a fictional fantasy story. That's right. We're just talking about her losing her shit, whatever you want to call it. I mean, right? You know, it was a it was decision. They they said in the after the show that she made that decision then, right there on the spot. And what would have executed it a little better is if they would have played those past voices in her head while the bells were tolling then we could have seen a I little like bit that. more of that yeah you know that, that would have been great Elena Tyrell be a dragon um you yeah. know burn them all all that right. kind of stuff hearing those Hear voices brother say don't wake the dragon or yes you know, stuff like that those things they played in the about the show you know instead of in the show <laughs> but um yeah I mean uh, is there any precedent to anything like this any ruler ever with a dragon do something so horrible that wasn't, you know, with innocent people? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, her her dad. 
Not with a dragon, though. That, that's just what I mean. Yeah, with, with a dragon, has anybody ever? Yeah, there's been uh, burnt there's civilians like that. Not civilian, not straight up civilians. I don't think the dance of the dragons. Uh, sorry, you hear the, the you hear Riddick back there, uh, the uh, quote unquote studio dog, and I'm doing air we, quotes. We keep our dire wolves. Yes, that's right. We don't send them beyond the wall <laughs> and not say goodbye. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there were there were always casualties in in the Dance with the Dragons type stuff, and and he and Heron the Black who who maintained control of Heron Hall at the time of Aegon, Aegon burnt Heron Hall, but okay. and everybody in it roasted like they were in an oven. But I see. he had given them fair warning and said, you know, if you don't do this by dawn, he gave everybody a choice. Right. So Danny was always supposed to rhyme with Aegon, but it ended the opposite way. Where Aegon won the crown, united king, you know the seven kingdoms or the nine kingdoms, whatever, and um, but he always gave somebody a choice. And most people, once he did one thing, they laid their swords down, and he let them keep their lands and titles and whatever. So it rhymed in a way, but uh, it yeah, it, we saw the swords being laid down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's that's true. But uh, she yeah, so she decided to to or she lost it whatever the yeah. terminology is and i was fully fine with her going towards the red keep yeah. and blasting through it cersei right there on the balcony i thought she was coming straight for that little balcony i mean obviously she couldn't see her that far away but you know i mean yeah. that's from we, if we could and i was fine with that but when she started going to the streets it, i mean i it was just horrible to watch and it was i'm i'm more of um talking about the idea that this is how it ends, book and show. You know, this is a character that you pulled for, and they played this awesome music, and you're always pulling for, you know, Danny. She can't went through all this shit, and she grew up and learned all this shit. She learned how to rule and marine. She decided to stay there longer than she needed to. She freed slaves, Misa. You know, the whole thing. So it's just a big tragedy, and uh, it makes me question whether I'd ever want to invest again in another long series. Yeah. Just to get a, a, a shitty ending. I mean, not I'm, and I'm not saying the writing or the books or show or whatever. I'm just saying a general tragedy where you know I just I, I guess I like happy endings, right? You know, or some kind you, of happy. ending. You find these things out about yourself. Yes, you know, I mean, you know, like this we, happens. We, we we all read Shakespeare at some point. I suppose. Well, I guess a lot of us have. <laughs> you yeah. know, Shakespeare and tragedies. But that's what this became, regardless of how it happened in the show, regardless of the writing or the issues and how characters went backwards the last few episodes and the lack of information on the Night King. So I agree with all that. This is, this episode or this season has not been great in regards to how they've handled things. A guy at work today told me, um, and it's something I hadn't heard yet, but that there are people on forums and Facebook and things saying, um, I named my kid Khaleesi and now this, you know, and, yes, and I, I saw I never this thought about that. I'm sure yes. there's some Daenerys's out there, and there Khaleesi's. is. I saw an article earlier about a Khaleesi, and now they're all like, uh, you know, yeah. So, um, what do we learn about naming your kids <laughs> after fictional characters? Uh, I don't know. Until <laughs> at least wait till you finish the story. No joke. But man. I guess I mean you have kids. You can't wait, right, <laughs> to, right. to name them. So yeah, that's an issue. You got all these Dannys out there, and uh, you know Khaleesi's and all that stuff, and uh, she's not going to make it. I mean, she can't. And that's what I was saying last night on Twitch with Val was, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't picture anything right now, anything mm -hmm. that gives me any kind of sweetness to the end of this thing. Right. Nothing. I mean, I said maybe. Like an Arya, right? Arya finally let go of her list, which she should have two episodes ago when she was mm -hmm. in Winterfell talking like about we family. Like we thought she did. Like we thought she did. And then the Hound had that great scene with the Hound. He basically says, look, you want to end up, end up like me, you know, just get out of here. Um, she says, Sandor, thank you. Great scene. Oh, yeah. But so maybe, maybe there's some little thing with her as a character where she goes back and she says, you know what, Gendry? I thought about it. Maybe Dude, I, I would, could try being a lady. I would love that. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something that could we could could call sweet. I would love that <laughs> because it, you know Danny's going to die. I'm I'm just saying John's going to do it. I'm assuming because it's just, there's a dragon there. 
There's still a dragon involved. There's still an army, I'm assuming, that follows her. Right. Um, he's the only one that can control a dragon. Maybe Bran. People have talked about Bran warging the dragon, Drogon. Yeah. I don't think that's happened. I don't think Bran has anything to do with this particular story. Right. He should have been involved with the Night King and the Long Night and all that stuff, and he, he's he's pretty worthless now. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions on how it's going to happen, but I just, there's no scenario. There's nobody left that I care about ruling or any of that stuff. I mean, I guess you could say maybe they do change things up with a council or let the Seven Kingdoms go back to being their own thing, I, I guess. But that doesn't make me happy. Yeah. It just it doesn't. So, you basically, you need, you personally need uh, something like Arya doing that with Gendry. Davos goes home. Tyrion right. finishes the joke. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Um, I'm afraid Tyrion's gonna gonna die now. I, I think too. he's gone. I'm super afraid. I of think that. that she will know uh, magically know that uh, he released Jamie. Maybe that's why she told him it was a test. Ooh. I, I don't know, but I mean, she she shouldn't know that information. I mean, yeah. all those soldiers you don't know who lived and who died, and they never showed him escape. But uh, somehow she'll magically know that and. You know, I can see him. They're they're all they're all in disbelief what they just saw. So they're going to be pissed off at her. He's going to rip the pen off and die. I don't know. I mean, probably. So yeah, I mean, hopefully he can tell the joke before that happens. <laughs> just to, I mean, are they going to forget that now? I don't know. He said it twice in the show and never finished it. And you know, the the ground troops took their cue from her. Yes, and. Like we saw on the behind the scenes stuff, you know, it's it's uh it, it it really shows you the good guy in war is based on perspective, you know, and uh, yes, that's something we all need to remember, just in life, you know, um, can't help where you're born and you know sometimes where your affiliation lies as far as that stuff goes, but. Um, Tyrion walking around, you know, through the town, observing all that. What, what do you think was going through his mind? Like remembering walking those same streets when? Yeah, probably. I mean, obviously, you got the similar shot at last year after the loot train. Yeah. After Field of Fire, he's walking through, seeing the horror of burnt men that he knew. Right. So at that time, it was personal. It was family. He saw the horrors of what a dragon could do up close for the first time. Yeah. And that probably made him. And then, of course, the Tarleys happened right after that. That's the only thing, though, that she's done that wasn't really just. I mean, it was a choice. Yeah. But you could argue that she still shouldn't have done it. And I, I agree, I guess. Um, throw him in a cell. But that's the interesting part of the story. Everything else that she's listened to hasn't worked. Yeah, and it's made her it lose all this stuff. She sacrificed everything and her friend and um, her dragons now two of them, and uh, I guess that's part of it. But yeah, I think uh, now it's like you, you saw the the teaser where D John and Davos are walking through. Tyrion, uh, Arya comes back apparently from the White Horse save. Yeah, um, to King's Landing somewhere where they've cleaned off an area. <laughs> I don't know exactly <laughs> where that's going to be. But uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's more like okay, it's that was it. She's she's done. She's gone. I can't follow her. That type of thing. Right. I can't believe this just happened. I mean, they're all in shock and all. I'm assuming you you kept saying Queen of the Ashes um, as that episode was you know wrapping up. Right. Um, we know, no matter how crazy she's gotten, that's not what she wanted. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think even though it it will be in vain? that she will try somehow to justify or make amends or is she going to be cocky now and be like they fucking deserved it you know yeah i think i think the latter i think she'll she'll try to justify it but she won't there won't be any try to um, there won't be any amends i mean john may take that approach to get close to her that's true but i don't think she will i think now that she's made the decision she's in her head rationalized it She'll come out cocky and hey, accept it, I guess, in a way. And and basically, what she told John, uh, it'll be fear then or whatever. It let uh, it be fear. Let it be fear. Yeah. So that's her plan now: is to rule the ashes by fear. 
somebody's got to stop her now. Obviously, Grey Worm's going to stand by her at this point. You know, he followed her lead, did some horrible shit himself. Um, yeah. So he's going to stick right by her. You got Drogon and Grey Worm, basically. Tyrion is supposed to still be her hand, but I can't see. I, I can't see it. Yeah, I can't see. That's that's immediate. You know, uh, just you know, I'm I'm through. You know, take the badge off, throw it down. Uh, like I said, she'll probably know and put him on trial. The Dothraki seem to still be. They're back to the old their old selves from Essos. Like all the rules that she set up are now out the window. Even the Stark men, though. The Stark men and Knights of the Vale people, if you saw, John killed one. Yeah. Their own men killing women and children. And a lot of people are arguing, well, didn't, you know, back in season, you know, when the Red Wedding happened or whatever, didn't we all want Starks to go in and kill the Lannisters? It's like, yeah, the soldiers, when they were fighting. Right. They had laid their, they flipped the scripts. I mean, you saw the Lannisters soldiers helping people. Yes. And the Stark people killing them. So they completely flipped everything, and they had the bloodlust, and just took a cue from Danny. And John didn't know what to do. There was nothing he could do. He was no longer in control. He wasn't. That's right. His title it was meaningless at that point. Um, also, you got to you got to mention Sansa. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she said right there to Tyrion, um, you know, somebody's betrayed me. Let me guess, John, because he told. Sansa and she told you and you told Varys. That's right. She knows all this, so that's what may trigger the whole John Danny thing is she's going to she could fly out to Winterfell now. If she's going if she's still if she's now seeing everybody's an enemy. Um which Sansa is. Sansa yeah. did undermine her purposely. This is what so we can't I mean, it doesn't just like I said, we you, there's no justification. There's none. But there were a sequence of events that happened. And Sansa was part of that. And you have to acknowledge that, just like John was part of that by backing off uh, because he's uncomfortable with the ant thing or whatever. Uh, or he saw Varys being burned alive and kind of like, ah, oh, she she looked pretty emotionless when that happened. Yeah. So all those things led to her snapping. But, uh, yeah, you just can't let her off the hook because she's Littlefinger now. That's what she did. She became Littlefinger. Jamie became an asshole again or whatever. Went back to Cersei. Everybody regressed in some way. Most people. They did. And she is uh, she is Littlefinger. And so it makes you wonder, because John's going to hold a grudge that she told. He should. Right? Yeah. So defending her, his the way he is, um, he may have a hard time. I know he won't want Danny frying her. Yeah, I think that's the difference, right? Yeah. It's, it's now it's about fear and actual death. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because she's the queen technically for a day or two or whatever it is. I don't know how long. Like, I'm assuming it's going to be right after um, where they pick up. And then, uh, yeah, that will be the difference is, yes, Sansa said all that and, and Varys tried to kill her and Tyrion and him talked about it. And But that's the thing. That was Tyrion's job was to discuss – what's happening with the the advisors. The problem is they didn't go to her first, which yeah. is what I mean about everything being out of order. Cause at that time when Varys was already trying to kill her, she hadn't done anything wrong. Agreed. Um, you know, you know, not except, on screen. Exactly. And, and nothing that we know of and that we were told about nothing except for the past stuff that we've already mentioned, you know, yes, yeah, she yelled at a few people and, uh, Karth, and asked a poor, you know, and, and and killed masters there and all that stuff. Those were things Varys but, was already fine with. But right, that was an eye for an eye back then. Those are always calculated decisions to end slavery, so it was justified, and everybody was fine with it. And you pulled for. Her. But that was the hints. I mean, the Mad King burned them all. We all thought, and we were just all wrong. Um, we all thought that was more of the 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 Cersei ended up being the Mad Queen with the wildfire trick trying to trap and kill everybody and Jamie has to go stop her just like he did the mad king Danny's father and saves King's Landing again but no it was actually to tell us that like Maester Raymond said I said to you last night we were talking about doing this a Targaryen alone in the world is a terrible thing and now that means something completely different yeah. from the context from which we heard it when he told John that's right uh, it literally is a terrible thing because she's now alone and 
everybody's an enemy and everybody's, you know, whatever. So she did go Aries. If, if you're Tyrion, how do you survive this? You run now. That's what I think. You just don't He's go. got to disappear. He's, he would have to vanish, and I don't think he wants to. I think he's ready to just say his piece, and I tried, I believed in you type of thing, you know, and he's accepted his fate by saving Jamie. I think. Right. So it's almost like just do what you got to do. I, I don't know. I would see him trying to escape to Sansa, um, you know, back to Winterfell. Um, if if he's not broken, like you're saying, if he still wants to survive and try to right this wrong, he backed the wrong horse, so to speak. Right. I think he tries to escape to Winterfell, talk to Sansa. As much as I despise this new Sansa, um, hopefully Arya, that's where she headed. But she she still looks kind of dirty in that. Like she hasn't gone somewhere. And yeah, she looks like she just back. she just looks like she just went out of the city for a minute on the horse and Collected came right back and came back. Yeah, uh, whenever Danny has this little meeting outside of wherever it is in King's Landing, because there's still smoke in the background. Obviously, there's still fires burning in the background. So this is the first time she's probably went in the Red Keep or something and came out to address. She's going to address everybody. We, here's what we need, in my opinion. We need Ari to sneak back. Kill Grey Worm. Uh, take his face. Oh yeah. John deal with the dragon while Grey Worm deals with Danny. Uh, or right. Arya slash Grey Worm. Grey Worm. <laughs> yeah. Deals with Danny. And uh meanwhile Tyrion kicks at the Winterfell. And then how everything unfolds after that. Because do you think somebody killing the Queen? Then she'll have to take Danny's face. Send the Dothraki home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go back to Essos now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and uh, Unsully too, by the way. Right, have to deal with that because they'll follow her. They'll fight to the death. I, I guess. That's what I'm questioning. I, they they look like they are. They're going to still follow her. So um, my, my thing is, though, this whole thing just sucks. I, I, st I just, you might as well kill everybody. I, John's going to have to get on the dragon and... I guess. I mean, those are, that army. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know what they do at that time. Like, if he's able to get to Danny and kill her, um, because she's still talking crazy, you know, about going to kill Sansa or burn up other places, um, and he goes up and say just kills her. Um, does the army then like? Well, he's kind of right, you know. Or know. They, they did they follow her still? Do they go attack him? Or kill him, or grab him, or I, I don't know. Like when the queen falls, and you know, and then Grey Worm's the general. Yeah. So if he don't give a shit anymore, but do he they? Seems like he does with Masandi out of the picture. He yeah. seems like he's going to be a damn problem. But if he maybe comes to his senses, and realize what just happened, maybe there's a, maybe there's a talk in front of everybody with Tyrion and John or something. And he comes to his senses and realizes he was a, a killing machine robot too, and this wasn't right, regardless of what they've lost. Because um, the small folk had nothing to do with Masande, had nothing to do with anything with Danny's past. Um, I don't know. Maybe he comes to his senses and would just. No, I don't know. It's hard to say. Would, would would he would he try to avenge Danny if she dies? You know, there's going to be anybody who lives is going to be. They're gonna have a have a lot of trouble with a dragon around, right? And that's what I was saying. Maybe, maybe John, if he's not right there, you get to her, and then what? How would Drogon react? Would he would he try to burn? Would, would John still have an unburnt moment? Maybe because he's Targaryen, right? Would John? Would he still listen to John in some way? Since there's a bond there, either way. Uh, they typically bond with their riders, and he's never rode him. But I mean, it's the show. Um, he's still a Targaryen. Would he just like take off? Would he attack? I, I don't know. There's a lot of yeah, because people are going to have trouble with that. They're going to want it put to death. Anybody yeah, because who survived right. Because if you if you're thinking about it in the sense of they they dealt with the ice side of the things with the Night King in Episode Three in the battle for the long night, which was, you know, what, five hours of darkness or something. Um, 
then I guess you got to get rid of the dragons, even though in the whole, in the context of the entire story, yes, it seems like that ends in some kind of balance, but it doesn't make sense when there's been dragons around forever. And there were many, many great centuries and years with no, you know, dragons not killing people randomly and burning cities to the ground. Yeah. So it's like, do you got to kill Drogon? I would say, because a city needs the, you know, simple folk who are down there farming and doing all that stuff. They're they're going to be scared shitless, I would say. Anybody who survived, and, and then they're going to tell the tale to their kids. and Yeah, right, yeah. It's just going to be trouble, I think. Or maybe he just goes. Unless John can convince them, hey, I've got control now. She's gone, you know. Right, yeah. Uh, I don't know. They've all heard the tales of dragons and stuff, but um, he's just a tool of whoever controls him. Um, but maybe maybe he goes away. Maybe he goes back to old Valyria. I don't I, know. I think they're going to kill him. I think they got to. Yeah, I think I, they'll at least they'll probably. I think they'd have to vote. I think they would try to vote or something to kill, to kill him. It would be tough. I just can't imagine. Yeah, I'd imagine they, they're going to think that they're going to think we have to get rid of it because somebody could do this again. Yeah, you know, somehow or it, or he could do it by himself or whatever. But I don't know. We'll see. Because John won't want to rule in fear. No, by no, fear. No. If he chooses to take the throne, I don't know. I don't think he's going. to Yeah, do I still that. think I don't think he will now for sure. I think he would have begrudgingly before, you know, with Danny or if something happened to her before all this happened. Maybe she, you know, she, for example, died at Winterfell uh, or in this battle, you know, she actually got killed or something. I think he would have then for her um, and then, you know, go, going from there. But now I think it's just like, fuck all this, <laughs> you know. So he may end up, you know, I don't understand why, but maybe he does end up beyond the wall with Tormund and Ghost. Yep. Or at Castle Black or something. There shouldn't be a Night's Watch, but I mean just saying up yeah, north, away from everything. That. I could totally see that. Um, I don't know why he wouldn't just, after this, assuming this goes down like this, he wouldn't just go home. But He probably don't want to be around Sansa or anybody, you know? Maybe he's done with everybody. I, I don't know. And that's what, I, that's what I've always said about the, the bitter, is that I think he has to live and... In, in, deal with all this and live with all this and all this loss and heartbreak and whatever. So I, I don't imagine that's what's going to happen. And I could see, let's say he does take the throne. I would see him calling on Samuel, you know, or, or maybe he takes it for a, a day and calls a council. I don't know. And accepts who he is for a minute. And just to use that to get everybody to change things. And then he gets the fuck out, <laughs> you know, cause I can't see him sitting there. There's I don't even know now, honestly. Let's say there's a new king or queen, regardless if it's John or, or Sansa anybody, or anybody. Right. What are you going to do at King's Landing? You can't rebuild that. No, there's way. nothing left. But not in your lifetime. Not in a lifetime. That took. It started as Aegon's Fort, a wooden structure when Aegon came over, and that was just a wooden thing. It kind of grew bigger and bigger, and he had these swords shipped back there during the conquests. And then it became King's Landing later after all this all this went down. Now it's gone. It's ash. Yep. There's uh except for whatever piece she's whatever got yeah whatever little piece of the Red Keep or Magar's Holdfast is left. That's it. Where she's holding that meeting right there yeah. in the trailer. Yeah, and it's just a big flat area I've never yeah. seen before. So I don't know what that is. Maybe the Unsullied swept off an area. I was <laughs> just thinking sweeping. I swear I was. <laughs> Maybe they just cleared off an area. Um, but yeah, it's uh. It's just insane, man. And it's got a lot of... I mean, this is the biggest thing, the biggest television show in history. And here's the thing. I, again, I agree with all the bad decisions. Mm -hmm. This year, I've complained. Obviously, we've complained on live streams. Yes. I've complained in the review videos um, it's, it, you know, about the Night King and lack of answers. And people say, well, all you really needed to know was that he was created by the children and that's that was his goal it's just to kill everybody because that was what he's made for okay fine whatever but the point being that regardless of the writing and how it was done how she almost did a 180 in two episodes which it should have been over a series of, of, of at least a season uh if not a couple seasons of her actually like on a smaller scale, doing some horrible shit yeah they could at least give us a couple episodes of that kind of shit yeah where yeah. she's starting to like kind of lose it and whatever so but regardless of all that it's just sad the whole damn thing 
is sad. And it's a fucking fictional book series and TV show. And it's affecting a lot of people like this. It really is. It's just sad because you root for her. She was a, a fan favorite. A lot of people never liked Danny, even in the books. But she's a very young girl in the books, learning all this stuff. And I mean, she's 13 years old when the books start, for Christ's sake. So uh, I ne I've never understood the Danny hate uh, just from being a little girl, even though she seems to be a little bit entitled. But, um, of course, she learned from Viserys that she was. It You've seen me. I did not like her, um, and I just I came to really like her and what she was about, and you know wanted her and John to work it out and everything. I hate the way it's took a turn. Yeah, it's just uh, I never understood the hatred for her. I just didn't like her. I just didn't, you know. Yeah, because they had those and everything. I did, I just didn't like it, but I never hated her, and I damn sure. I almost feel sorry for her now more than a hater, even though I yes. know she's got to die and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just um, it, it's just a. I mean, it's just a classic tragedy, I guess. It's a tragic character where she became what she loathed. Let me ask you this, uh, totally off the subject, but were you okay with how Cersei died? Um, for the show, I was because they did not do the Valencar piece. I mean, I think we all preferred someone Jamie <laughs> you know but whoever but I wanted Jamie to be you know because we thought that Cersei would do the wildfire thing if I yeah. can't have it nobody can I, I totally thought and that. we did see wildfire exploding but that was just the old caches from the Mad King that they never yep. knew where they were or whatever so at least at least they remembered that little piece but no she just stood there thinking that she could actually win when we were led to believe an episode before that she could easily win because they had scorpions. Yeah, well, that's what she thought. And, and we uh, did too. I thought the Golden Company was fresh did. and everything, and yeah. they lasted three and a half seconds. Like I said, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. But um, I'm not so, I'm not um, like mad about the end, Cersei's ending Me because either. at least at the end, she, which is why you felt something for a second, yep. just for a second. She kind of found her humanity and wanted her child to live. And her and Jamie are still in love after all this time. And I'm not mad about the way they went out. I think a lot of people expected, and I did too, um, somebody to come in and kill her because she deserves to die a horrible death. Exactly. She's done horrible things and tortured people and lied and cheated and, and everything. Um but they they flipped it on us, man. They they got to us with that tear. Yes. And she's really uh, she's still human somewhere in there, even though she's a monster. And Jamie, you know, he reverted back to just not accepting any change. I'll go back to her because we all thought she was he was going to go try to reason with her, like to save the child. And yeah, look, just get out of here and stop all this. You can't win. Yeah. And then she's like, I'm gonna Kyber go light it up, and you know he stabs her or chokes her. Yep. Yep. And, you know, but no, I mean, I know they didn't do the Valencar thing in the show. So uh, I'm not I'm not one that's really worrying about that little piece a of it. A friend of mine said that, um, you know, Lena Headey did some of the best acting without lines that they've seen in a while. And I have to agree. Um, those, those scenes with her fall into pieces, you know, before our eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the scene, though, when the mountain killed Kyburn. I mean, just snapped real quick. It was like, bang, uh, Jason Voorhees. Yeah. And she was just like, um, yeah, let me just slip by. Yes. Excuse me, this is a family squabble. Right. The Hound didn't even look at her. No, he after, did not. After he said, your grace, and all the dudes came rushing, he took care of them in two seconds. He cut through them like cake. That <laughs> you was know, awesome. like Barristan Selmy said. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was there was great parts of it, like that, and the Aria scene with the Hound. And you felt, but and you, you almost didn't get to mourn the Hound. Because here's one of my one of my favorite characters, a lot of people's fan favorite. He goes out, he's gone. He he embraced the fire, yeah, and took his brother through the wall, the undead Frankenstein, and you can't even mourn him because the Danny thing overshadowed everything. It did. That, so that's a shame. It's almost a secondary, like oh shit, I forgot the Hound died, you know. So it was. It's 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 really just overall just it's just depressing, honestly. It is. I did, I wasn't happy with uh, Euron's death. Yeah, he I got to go out smiling. I didn't like that. Yeah, that was just odd. You know, I, I'm fine with Jamie killing him. Right. That's fine. Yeah, me but, too. 
you know, and I used to look past small things like this, but washing up on the beach, why can't he just take the brunt of the dragon fire and accept it and smile? He can do his smile. Right. And go out on his own damn boat, but he has to wash up right there or swim up or whatever. Yeah. Just at the right time. Um, but I guess it was more of a, I don't know, let Jamie get something back on him for joking with him and I fucked the queen and how does she like with a finger up the bone? Here's my complaint. Too. I don't know. It's just weird. If by some miracle he washes up, swims up right there, right? Instead of getting out of the water, uh, Kingslayer, you know? <laughs> Why didn't he get out half scorched going, the fucking bitch is going crazy. Yeah, she, you know, right. I mean, he, he sees... You know, Jamie there and automatically goes back to being a smart ass. You know what I mean? Right. Everything's like, cool. Yeah. Like, like you just didn't lose the entire Iron Fleet. Exactly. And, and he's, well, he claimed to be a king now. So I guess that was the idea is he killed two kings now. He wasn't a king. <laughs> he was just because he screwed the queen. In his mind, he was, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, I didn't care for that, really. I mean, I'm fine with Jamie doing it, but uh, he got, he would have died. He's like, I'm. That's what would, I guess that was the little payoff that because he's like I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister yeah and then you really wasn't right it was just a kind of Danny <laughs> secondary effect and I saw that tweet that was hilarious somebody tweeted behold the Valencar and it's a picture of a rock <laughs> that is <laughs> good know? that is really good and so that went viral on Twitter the next day or that night or whatever it was but um yeah I mean it's just uh it's just sad and it's sad that um. Everybody's so divided on it. I mean, it's just it's and now there's petitions. Today there's a petition with I don't know how many signatures now to redo season eight, get rid of Dan and Dave. I mean, just crazy shit. You told man. me about the petition to keep oh, yeah. Dan and Dave. There's from... one to get them fired from Star Wars, and it's like, okay, <laughs> I can buy into one to remake season eight yeah. with somebody else, but you don't you don't you don't go after people's jobs because you don't like their writing. That's right. I mean, that's you know, that's just crazy. That's a little too far. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not defending the writing, but come on. No, 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 technically, when it boils down to it, we're not owed anything by them. That's right. We're not owed Their anything. best effort, you know. We're not owed a book by George R. R. Martin. Right. We're not owed a specific outcome by the books or the show. Um, Trust us on that. Jeez, Louise, we we had that whole uh, oh, ending yeah. written. So well, I thought. Right, and, exactly. You know, just brush that right off. Yeah, never even a, a hint of it in the show. We'll we'll see. There'll definitely be some important stuff in the book about the Isle of Faces, no doubt. But um, the ending's the ending. I mean, it it's just not it's just not to be. Um, I think the biggest other thing too about this season, not just this episode, was like I said, we mentioned the Night King, but the lack of uh, prophecy answers. Now, I have always said that prophecies are not legit. Yeah. Um, yep. There are they are in a way they're very figurative, but there's not a literal Azora High. It's not right. Arya Lightbringer's not the damn cat's paw blade or dagger. But I think a lot of people expect at least some answers. I mean, we didn't get what Varys heard in the flames from Kenvara last year. We thought maybe that'd be brought back up. Never was. Now the actors are actually coming out. Speaking of Varys, Kit Harrington, Conla Hill, who plays Varys. Um, I, I who think, did you get hearing to play? <laughs> uh, Johnny, Johnny, somebody. I can't, I can't remember. Agen, Agen. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah. Now and then, I think uh, Gendry has said something in, in an interview now on live with Grey Worm uh, about character development last season, actually. Ooh. But now they're coming out like Conal Hill specifically said, I was not happy since season six. Because I felt like Varys just kind of fell off a cliff and he didn't do anything. Yeah, and he, I, I felt like I, I felt like, what am I doing wrong as an actor? Oh wow! So he took it personally. Like um, he wanted, he felt like, I think one example was you know a showdown with Littlefinger. Never got to see him die or have a hand in it. Yeah, and I, I agree. I always have said, yeah, Varys has got one last thing to do. Yes, you have. You know, maybe in this case in the show, he kills Kyburn. Right. His his almost his rival with the little birds. Because in the books, he kills Kevin Lannister. But no, nothing. So he's disappointed. Kit Harrington said on that interview, and she said about another show, I think it was uh, How to Train Your Dragon he's involved with. Mm -hmm. I can't let you go without asking about Game of Thrones. If you had one word to describe the ending, he said, disappointment. 
or disappointing. Yeah. And then he tried to play it off and say, no, epic. And he's like, no, either one of those. Wow. So uh, they don't like it. And, of course, Amelia, you heard the thing. We all thought she was trolling. Best season ever, you know, yeah. sarcastically. Um, and then that whole line about the, the you know, the taste left in people's mouth of what Danny is. And we all thought she was trolling. Sure did. Uh, no, she straight up said it. That's pretty much exactly what she meant. And we even went down those avenues going, what could she have meant? And yeah, there were a, a lot million of, different things, but never that. There were a lot of videos about what could it have meant. Does it mean she's goes crazy? Does it, she just trolling, you know, because they can't give away things and, and they can't legally and contractually but going crazy. And what we saw in that last episode, we never put those two together, you know? No. Thought yeah. going crazy was totally different than what that was, but wow. Right. I mean, the Mad Queen's been brought up a million times yeah, you know, over many has. years, but it sure has. Like I said, the way they executed it, they always had her checked, her impulses, and you, they made sure you knew she wasn't Viserys. And she wasn't her father. She even last year, you know, apologizing to John for the atrocities of House Targaryen against the Starks and his family. Right. Uh, I am not my father, John. Don't judge a daughter by the sins of the father or son by the sins of the father. All this stuff to re to reel her back in or make us think, yeah, that's just a red herring. It's about Cersei, right? It's about Cersei blowing up the fucking King's Landing thing. But no, it was never Cersei. She's apparently a good queen compared to her. <laughs> Let me throw you a curveball, Chris. Uh-oh. <laughs> Can you see this happening? Okay, we got Cersei gone. We've got Jamie gone. What about Danny is going to put Tyrion to trial, like you said? And Bronn saves him because Bronn still wants Tyrion to uphold. Oh, I don't know. Because because without Tyrion, Bronn gets nothing. No, and and that was based off what Tyrion could say to Danny to agree to. Exactly, but we know that Danny's probably going to put Tyrion to a trial. Could you see Tyrion maybe using him in a trial by combat again? Somehow, I don't. I don't know if she grants trials. By I was combat. thinking that too. <laughs> I don't know if that. But happens. I could actually see Bronn. Using that crossbow yeah, I, and killing Danny from a distance, maybe so to since save did, Tyrion so he can get his castle. Since he's the one who sh actually shot Drogon the first time. Oh, that's true. That's dude. uh, that's not a bad idea actually to to, to kind of get some use out of him because I mean he went to Wintertown and he said know, I'll be back after the battle. Yeah, and they they just left. Yeah, and, and apparently they were there for weeks because Jamie and and Brienne were apparently there for a while. That's right. And and so he just vanished. Yeah. They left and went down to King's Landing, which took two months. Um, I mean, a procession takes two months going from King's Landing to, to, to Winterfell or back. So that's a long time. It is. So where is he? Is he still in Wintertown? Did he, I I, you know, he wasn't in the city or was he? I mean, right. I don't know. So I could see something like that. Him saving Tyrion's ass one more time. Same. Yeah, and then therefore John can take the king, the crown for a minute if he does or whatever. But yeah. he's still alive to say, "Look, I promised him." Yeah, High Garden. I mean that 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 could be that's that not could a, be yeah. leaving me feeling pretty decent a little bit. Yeah, that's you know? not a bad idea to to at least wrap it up in some way that's kind of poetic, I guess. Will we see Sam again? I think in the epilogue. I think there will be an epilogue part of this uh, episode. I'm guessing, by the way. This episode is called A Dream of Spring. I mean, it's just, it's not like it's a hard guess. But it could call it A Song of Ice and Fire, too. I don't know. But um, I'm guessing there will be a portion of it, because obviously the first part of it, whatever, how long it is, will deal with the aftermath, and we've seen the preview. But I think there will be an epilogue portion still. I don't know if it's right after, a couple months, a couple years, where it kind of moves around to different places, what the survivors are up to. I'd love it. I um, need it. How... Things have changed if they have. That's the only thing I could think of that gives me like a, oh, okay, well, it's cool that Sam is doing this now. And, yes. Uh, and it's cool that there's a council now or the kingdoms are all separate or whatever it ends up being. Right. So I think we'll do, we'll see maybe, maybe we will see Torment and Ghost again. Maybe yeah, that's where that's John true. ends up or something. Um, so I think we'll get an epilogue where we see a couple of these people for sure. I, I don't think they can close it without 
an update. Yeah. If like uh, after a little bit of time, at least. If you had to pick a council, uh, well, I would say Davos needs to live. Uh, yeah. Gendry. Um, yeah, Gendry is now technically still Lord of Storm's End. Um, and he's what involved. Uh, Bran, I mean, sure, he can see everything. You need a, you need a, a, a dictionary. Yep. Sure, uh, Bran could be there. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe John convenes one. You got so you got John as candidates. You got you know Sam. You you bring in a maester from the Citadel um, or something. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so you have uh, so uh, yeah. I don't. It don't have to necessarily be any of our main characters. Sansa, you know, she's learned to be a good leader, but even though she's Littlefinger, hey, uh, you know, but it's it's kind of served a purpose. It almost goes back to the beginning. Everything it resets. Gosh, it does. You know, it resets with a, a council of a little finger and a various style master of whispers dude. I don't know who yeah. I don't know who that would be. An assassin. You need, you got an assassin if you need one. Arya. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if the. I don't know if it makes sense for all the main characters from all their different backgrounds to all of a sudden just stay and want to be because it's like you said about Davos and I've said a long time. Just go home. Yeah. Just just let Please. them go home. So I don't know. Maybe it's some no name people, you know, that we uh, we don't know, and they're like cousins of people. But I did say this too. I mentioned I think in the live stream Sunday after the show. You know, the main four houses, especially on the show, have always been Targaryen, Stark, Lannister, and um, who am I missing? Baratheon. <laughs> Baratheon. Thank you. With Gendry being raised back up, so maybe four people on the council from those I like houses. That. I like that a lot where they're all, you know, actually working together in some way. So I, I, I thought maybe that's possible. So that would give you a, I don't know. Gendry again, he said, he don't know anything about being a Lord, but he still, he can give you the, the, the idea or that represents small folk yes, bastards. Absolutely. And dude. people with, that are not Lords. And so that actually makes a good council. That is important. So you have people from nobility and then you know, common folk and whatever that actually represent them uh, like and their that. interests and how they live for real, you know. Yeah. Eating bowls of brown and flea bottom. He is <laughs> you know? right there. He's it, not far from it, there. Exactly. He's only a, he's only Baratheon by name now. He's, Damn right. He's never been to Storm's End. He don't even know what it looks That's like. Freaking awesome. Um, so yeah, we maybe we maybe we see Storm's End in the epilogue. And that council, those four people. That's when Tyrion could finish the joke. Yes, if that would be perfect if he's, if he's alive. Yes, um, I, I don't know though. I, that's that's what I'm struggling with was with, with the Tyrion piece is if he dies, when it, like at what point does he tell the joke? I know. <laughs> There's no time. I think Bronn saves him, dude. That's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't know, and that's what I hate though. I hate all this because we're talking about having to kill Danny. Yes, we are. We're talking about now. You know, for any good to come out of this, she's got to go, and Ooh. that just sucks. Is well, could this be when, say, somebody like John flips it and says, "You, you know, you burnt the Tarleys, but we're going to send it to you to whatever exile uh, somewhere." Yeah, I don't you know. Were. I don't know if she could ever survive. I don't think they could let her survive this though, because if there's a dragon and her, yeah, that's right. It could something right. can happen again, and if she just gets near Drogon, it's over again. So I think they, I think they got to take her out, honestly, and, and I hate it. Yeah, because I don't think there's an exile or throwing her in a black cell or the unsullied and everything wouldn't put up with that. Yeah, exactly. And that's again the question comes back around to them. What you know, did, are they still loyal? You know, if he kills her or whatever right there, I mean, would they immediately attack him or what do they do? Would they follow him? Because he's Aegon. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, if he could take control of that dragon, they would. Yes, maybe they, they that's probably true. would. Yep. And that's what I've been thinking about maybe the the John, if there is still a the last little hope for an unburnt moment. We don't need to see it. No, but, but it would it would give you it would give them clarification on and we would not question it would be it. They would like the gray worm they would and drop. the people exactly. And the few people I don't know if there's anybody remaining uh, left when she hatched her dragons, but they see he's magical too. That's you right. Magic y. <laughs> yes, he's magic y. He's magic y too. Yeah, we'll listen to him. Um, and then he just like dismisses everybody. Go to fuck home. I like it. <laughs> so, I really do. And then uh, he goes home like my watch has ended again type thing. Like he walked out of the night's watch and fuck it. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go be a free folk without rules. I don't know. Um, it, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. 
that we're we're talking all this stuff that has to do we with got getting one rid of Danny. Episode left. That's it. And man. we're talking about all this stuff to pack into it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a long one, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm just going to go into it like I had the last few since episode one. Yeah, with low expectations. Got to. It just, just you really have to, people. It, it is. It's just. Uh, it's sad. Uh, the whole damn thing's sad. And then uh, and then it comes the real life version of it. Portion of it is. What do we, you know, there'll be a few weeks or maybe in a couple months of, of wrapping it up. Yes. Talking about, you know. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, what what happened at the very end and closure on the whole thing. And then it's and then it's gone. I mean, we, do, we do have a prequel coming. I will say really quick, I saw yesterday, I believe, they started filming. That's exciting. And it's working under the working title of Blood Moon. So Ooh. that's interesting. This is, will be obviously the one about the long night, the first long night, or before the long night. I'm assuming it ends with the long night. We don't really know. So it's supposed to be like 5,000 years before, or maybe 10,000. They've said both. Somewhere in there, because the history's not exactly right. So we do have prequels coming. But it's like, man, do I really want to get invested in something like this again? Uh, yes. it's, it's not the same writers, <laughs> you know, it's not the same That's writers. True. There you go. Uh, so there's, you definitely have a different set of writers and uh, she's, she's done a lot of great movies and stuff. But anyway, there is a prequel and there are four more spinoffs. I'm loving it. So you're going to have other things in Westeros, but it will never take the, uh, I guess like Amelia Clark said, the taste out of, uh, any of our mouths about what she is or was Whew. if she has to die actually. So it'll never take away uh, the sadness of this whole thing and how it's went down, but it, it, at least it's something, you know. Um, I, I will be, I will get cheesy for a second though and say this: regardless of the show, regardless of the story, the books, and how it ends, and how some people love it or hate it, or yeah. the writing's horrible, or this or that, or George R. R. Martin's a genius and they're not, or whatever, all the fights, yeah. It's still been one hell of a ride for the last four years for Dude. me on YouTube, live streaming and videos every that's week, not being and cheesy, Chris. talking about it, and the cool, awesome community that uh, some of you are now listening to this podcast. Um, but the, that's been really, really cool. Uh, it's changed my life, yeah, um, and got me to. Uh, to start, you know, looking into other things. Like I'm writing this book now and stuff. And I did this little Game of Thrones book with all these other great YouTubers and did one chapter in it. And that's kind of cool. I um, mean, there's been great things to come from it. Regardless of how it ends, it's about the journey is what I was going to say that sounds cheesy and cliche. But it's true. I it mean, it's very it's, true. It's about the journey, not the destination. So that's the important part as far and as the real world. this was one hell of a journey. It has been. It's been yeah. crazy, and I, and that's the thing. Uh, Even for it, the people who haven't created YouTube, oh yeah, yeah, channels, yeah, yeah. just this the journey, meeting all these new friends, it's been amazing. Yeah, the community in general, it's been awesome, and it feels like a. That's what I'm saying. It kind of feels like a goodbye or something. It does because I don't know what to expect after this on YouTube. I don't expect on you know after we wrap it up and I do a a, a few videos on the end and you know, final thoughts and we do a few live streams after it's over and final thoughts. I mean, I don't know what to expect on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have no idea. We'll keep doing stuff and I'm trying to uh, do other things. We're going to keep doing this podcast. It'll become yeah. a, a regular weekly thing. And, uh, by the way, we will be getting in the studio. Um, I've, it's going to be a while. I'm, we're getting some, everything's going, but it's everything's there's some delays and moving process obviously happening. But uh, that will happen at some point, regardless. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do, but I don't, I'm, a, I'm don't want to get so tied into one thing that I'm, I feel trapped, trapped. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Remember senior year, and uh, you, you finally get your yearbook at the end of the year, and <laughs> yes. they let everybody, you know, hang out, sign yearbooks and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know the end's coming, and and those. Uh, those yearbook, you know, entries are different than all the others. It's not you know, raise hell over the summer, you know, see you next year kind of thing. You know it's coming to an end. It is bittersweet. Right. You know what? That's a that's a great idea for a podcast right there. We actually go through the yearbooks <gasps> and everybody always writes uh K I T N. Keep 
Keep in touch. What is that? K. Oh, <laughs> and their phone. K I T. Yeah. yeah K I T. And their phone number. Call some of those old numbers. Is yes. That what you're saying? Do a podcast <laughs> where we literally go through and say, "You said keep in touch." Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'd get parents' houses and shit, yeah. but that would be funny. What actually. do you mean Jennifer's not there? Yeah, yeah she said keep in she touch. She said keep in touch. <laughs> exactly. That would be hilarious. I wonder if people's done that, I'm sure. I don't know. I don't know, Chris. That That's pretty funny. awesome. I like that idea. And then last night I told you a minute ago, I was watching, it's, for some reason in my own feed, my vlog thing came up of uh, cooking with Chris. And I watched that thing. That's been two years, man. On the, I hadn't done nothing on the vlog channel in two years. That was funny, actually. I, 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 if I do say you so myself, you got great feedback on. I that know. One. I, so I don't know how that happened, but that made me think of like other things to do. But I mean, it's not. It's, it's you know that you can't put that on the main channel since it's more pop culture, movies, and TV. But that's the other thing. I, I mean, I watch. I watch a few other things, not much, but I, I watch Lucifer. Um, I'm watching the four season now on Netflix since they saved it. Uh, we talked about Cobra Kai some, but those are not in, those are more one-off fun, lighthearted shows. They're not in depth. Yeah. There, you know, there's no history to learn behind it in a million books and thousands of pages to, uh, you know, theorize on. So I don't know how well stuff like that would do, you know, as far as other content coming Here, after, after. You got to remember though, will you get some kind of joy out of it? it you know, cause as long as it doesn't feel I don't know, like a burden or like a drag for you right, to do. Exactly. Throw it out there and you know, people will you you'll get you'll get new viewers and people Yeah, I mean they'll let me know how they feel about it. But that's what that's the great thing about, you know, going when I when I for example watch Lucifer or Cobra Kai or whatever, these lighthearted just shows that are not really deep. Mm -hmm. They're just entertaining, but they're they're fun. I don't like when I watch an episode I don't like I just go to sleep and sleep fine. But with this. But with Game of Thrones, <laughs> you think about it for a week. You do. Because right. obviously it's my job uh, in a way. I mean, I'm doing videos on it. We're talking about it right here on a podcast. Right. But it affects you. Yeah. Like that for a couple of days when you see something this horrible. Well, I saw, I saw you burning your books in the front yard that one day. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All those pops are burning. I know. I should have filmed it. Damn. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, the whole thing's it's over. It's almost over. And for somebody like me who jumped in right on the very end, you know, like basically the final two and a half seasons, I jumped in and I've watched each of these season, these episodes this season, three or four times each. That's a first for me. Right. Um, you know, I've gotten so invested and, in, and in, for me to know it's going away. And I just got here, basically. You know, it sucks. It really does. Yeah, I mean, there's always books. This was a long, long break between seasons. It was in for it to be wrapping long. up in six it, weeks, and I don't think any of us really understood how fast six weeks would fly by. Yeah, we we said it would. We joked about we it. We joked yeah. about it, right? But when it happened, it's like, damn, it's already week six coming up now. I mean, we're on Wednesday of, of week five, you know, already. So it's it's absolutely insane, um, and then it's just gone. <laughs> but I, you know, again, prequels, and there's going to be five of them supposedly. Uh, one is is now shooting the pilot. They will certainly green light that. They've already named this huge cast, so th that that's mm -hmm. coming, and that's supposed to be next year. So that should be on time, just like a regular Game of Thrones season, except it won't be our the characters we know. I think even the people who leave episode six absolutely hating it. When they get a little bit of time away from it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can definitely burn out on this shit. Yeah. I know. Trust me. Um, but I, I'm, I was also going to say that, too. I wonder how this, because, I mean, this is not going to end well. Mm -mm. This last episode is was an ending. Episode three was an ending for me. You're right. A lot of people, I don't know, will people, as many people, care about the prequel? Because maybe we get Night King answers. You know, more detailed answers as far as... Why now? Who? Whatever. I don't think we can get the why now because it's going to take place in the, place in the past. But uh, I don't know. After the disappointment of this season and the, I mean, these are the lowest rated shows ever. If they're the they're the highest viewed, but the lowest rated, which any, is crazy. Any new sh show, whether it's a prequel or not, if they could get fifty percent of the audience, 
Oh it's yeah, a blockbuster. Because this one was the highest rated with I think it was including uh, HBO Go and HBO Now, like nineteen million, eighteen point something million people watched this episode. The highest they broke their own record, but it was the lowest rated in history too. Right, which just beat its own record last two <laughs> weeks ago. Wow, which was the battle of Winterfell and how it was so quick and. You know, uh, no answers with the Night King other than the the vague stuff we had already gotten. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, uh, what are you giving it? Um, say out of ten stars, up to now this this season. This season. The season. From a story perspective, or from <laughs> overall? <laughs> I mean, if you're, you know, look, we, like I we, like you said this the other day. You said this the other day. As far as when we saw the production of it, we know why it took so long. That's right. So you you, you cannot it. take away from any, even the writers, I don't care. You cannot take away from the production, the crew, the cast, the writers, the whole the stunt team, the camera people, the costume, everything, the score. Yeah. Those, um, you cannot question their work and what they put into this and all that stuff, but... From a story perspective, I don't know. I've never really done a star or a rating system. But, um, yeah, this was very rushed, as pe- a lot of people predicted it would be because it's only six episodes. So, I don't know. I would say, I don't know. I would I would just say this. If you gave it a three, it, it, and then I asked you, what would you give the series? That three would only bring it down to a nine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the series all time, and you know, yeah, I mean it. Would I change it just because I don't like the ending? No, because it's it's been a great fucking. It's been it the best absolutely. show in history, no doubt. But it does it does sting a bit for them to the way they've done this last season, regardless of it was going to be a bad ending in the sense of a tragedy. Yeah, um, and how what Danny's become and whatever. It's still. I don't know. I think that it does probably sour it for a lot of people. I don't know. We'll get more feedback in the comments. Does this does this ruin the whole? Like, would you ever yeah. go back now and watch Game of Thrones again from the get get go? Would like, you re, uh, recommend it to somebody? Yeah. Would you still recommend it? Exactly. You know, I I was never one of the lost people, but I heard yes the uproar. Yes, same. They I watched a little like bit of Lost. Ending. I stopped watching Lost before. The ending because it started getting crazy anyway. When I started hearing about dinosaurs and shit on an island, right. I was done. It was like, what are you doing? And so I never got to the ending that I heard about. Yeah, and but there was there was a uh, an uproar, and it was and huge. I think uh, this is definitely topping that. And now people were actually saying that this is the best thing they could do now is actually make this whole thing be a dream. That Bran wakes up and oh yeah, says, that's right. uh, "Father, you wouldn't believe the dream I just had." And that used to be a meme yes. that, you know, as a joke, like, this is what's going to happen. No bullshit. You know, but now people actually want it to happen. So, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. It's like um, Eric, my cousin, you know, he's watching it now. He's on the end of episode or season two. Right. I talked to him today and I was just, I was just biting my tongue because he was like, he's getting to the point, like he hates Joffrey, you know, he's, yes. all, he's all ready to see that kind of stuff. And I'm like, do I, I mean, because he hears things, obviously, but he don't know exactly what's happening. But uh, it's like, would I? Does he? Should I tell him just to stop watching it? You're not no. gonna like the ending. No, no. Nope. You got to go through the whole experience. You got to. <clears throat> you got to because it's it's it is deep. It is in the first four seasons, and 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 some some uh, some people had problems in five, six, and seven. But uh, it, I mean, it, it is very loyal to the books because there are books for people to compare them to. Right. Uh, again, we don't know what they have from Winds of Winter, you know, which is, again, oh, by the way, I'm going to say that too. George R. R. Martin did say that on his not a blog. Did I say that already? He confirmed he has not finished anything. That was a Are lie. Are you serious? He did to yesterday, I believe. Um, for some reason, Barrison Selmy, the actor, came out and said that. He had this plan. There's... So he had him finished, and there was a de- secret deal with HBO not to release him. Wow. And it was like, uh, okay. And then he came out and had to address it on his blog, and I read it. It's legit. He uh, he said he's still working on Winds of Winter. He hadn't even started Dream of Spring. So that was all bullshit. Oh, my God. So I don't know why that came to be a thing. We joked about it years yeah. ago. 
But uh, I never really believed it, but apparently people started putting this out there as a real thing. But for him to say I haven't even started on it, uh, we do know that there's at least an outline, and he told them how the story's going to end. Yeah, yeah. He's st- they still had the major beats and who dies yeah. and, and, and the ending. Yeah, so it, it that's what I'm saying. This is this is definitely going to go down in the books, and um, whether people believe it or not, it's going to happen because um, this is too big of a beat. This is too big of a thing. And now, of course, I'm thinking back, as I've kind of processed this all week, I'm thinking back to show things and book quotes and all this stuff with right. what's pointing this direction, you know. And then that Maester Amon really stuck out to me, you know. A Targaryen alone in the world's a terrible thing. You- yeah, because that was the whole point. She felt alone, and now she's terrible. <laughs> so it's a literal, it's, she's, he's telling you what's happening. Do you think there's a chance that after the season ends and all the backlash dies down a little bit, that Dan and Dave or Dan or Dave come forward and say, look, guys, when we originally made this deal, he promised us by the time we got there, he would have those other books ready that, for that us? That actually is true. That was the plan, yes. Oh, okay. That's already been said. Okay, yeah. because I – that's – what I would want if I was those guys, I would say, okay, we'll start your show. We'll start your series right now. Yes. And then by the time we get there, it'll be years. You can have those books waiting on us, and then we'll have something else to exactly. go Exactly. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen. George R. R. Martin has said that himself in almost every interview. Where what, he apologizes for it? Essentially, where he's basically saying, yeah, when they started this show, I thought I could keep up ahead, stay way ahead of them. But and it got should so, have been able to. It, yeah, but it got so popular, I started getting pulled over here and over here and going to conventions and stuff, and right. it took me away from writing. And then he promised it in this, you know, but, several deadlines he missed. You, you, but you get you got to, like, hold him to the fire a little bit. I mean, yeah, look at how right, right. you're pressed to get certain videos out at a certain time. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you're pulled in other directions, softball games and everything. Yes. You know, this is a much smaller scale. Mind oh you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't right. get me wrong, yeah, right. but I'm just saying he's a professional. Yes, you know, at some point you say no, I can't go do. Your yeah, he ta- he takes full responsibility for it, no doubt. He said it many times that that was the original plan. By the time they well, got, then this is the worst fuck up I've ever heard of. By the time life. they see, they for got him this, to let them get roasted like this. Uh, that yeah, right. Uh, that is true. That is true because. I th- I don't know exactly that. I think I remember like by the time they got to season four, he would have wins out, and then you have. Uh, or season three or whatever it was. And then, you know, they have the whole couple years for wins, you know, and then he's working on Dream. And then by the time they get to season seven and eight or, ten, or nine or whatever it was planned for, right? Uh, then he has, they have the final book and everything. So. I've never heard them say that there's good authors as him, you know. So for them to be expected yeah. to finish as good as it started, yeah, it's, people it's, are being. It's, it's unrealistic. Yeah. It, it's definitely unrealistic. And, I don't know. Are there people out there that could have done it better? Maybe. I don't know. Right. But we don't know. That's what I mean. We do not know the conversations they had. We just know they had them. That's right. They had them. That's from the horse's mouth. There you Um, go. We know they had them. We know they talked about the ending. We know they talked about the major beats. Just over a period of days over at his house where they met and, and took notes and he gave them information. And I'm sure, like we mentioned, parts of wins because it's basically done. It's just not you know, compiled is what I believe. I'll bet you if if they had to do it over again, they would have stopped production when the book stopped, went and done a Star oh, Wars I'm sure, movie, because they, they're, and then come back yeah. later. They may very well let, have. let him take the heat then. Right, because, well, because exactly for the pause, for the delay. For the delay, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree. Because So it is it is a little unfair, but um, – because they're getting crucified. Let's just be they honest. Are. They're, <laughs> they are. They are. And and some and and they deserve some of it, but not all of it. For rushing this season, they deserve. Yes, it. that's my For, thing. Yes, but uh, and but it, as far as not having these characters as tight as they could be and the storylines as tight, yes, like I they would, used I to be. I do not blame them for that. Right. And HBO did want more. They wanted. 15 seasons right. and George R. R. Martin won in 15 seasons of course of course he did but uh, um, they I can't uh, and on a personal level I can't blame them for wanting to move on to other things no how long will we wait I mean were the, do you think that Kit Harrington and Sophie Turner and Macy Williams 
and and Amelia Clark, these that got so huge now, they want to say stay on Game of Thrones forever? No way. For fifteen years? Right. You know what I mean? Right. No. They want to do other things and do other movies and shows. Yeah. And, Bands I mean, break up way before the end. Yes, you know? absolutely. I want to so, do my own thing. From a personal level, I get it. I completely understand. And they don't owe it. That's when, like we said, you said earlier, they don't owe us anything. Yep. Um, it, it is what it is. But anyway, I mean, it, it's a, it's been a clusterfuck and a, a beautiful one at the same time. <laughs> I love it. I'm, <laughs> I mean, you know I'm, what I'm telling saying? you. I love it. I've, I've looked forward to every one of these Sundays. You know, just as much as I did in the seasons past. Uh, granted, my expectations are lowered. Yes, but still, definitely. I look forward to them. My anticipation and my excitement are still there. I hate it's going to be over. I, I do too. I do too. And uh, and at the same time, again, like I like I mentioned, just just sad. It even though we knew something bad was coming. I mean, we knew. <sighs> They told us in meta jokes. Ramsey said it himself. <laughs> you know, if you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. He literally said that. Yeah. That was a meta joke. They've done many of those. Um, but yeah, this just it, so it's just it's just sad. But it is a story, and as I mentioned before, it's it's the journey. <laughs> you made me sad at the beginning when you were saying <laughs> what Varys's character, uh I mean actor was saying. He yeah. thought it was something he did wrong. Yeah, he he said he can't help but an actor is uh, something about taking it personally, like um because he felt he should have had he st- kind of stopped doing cool stuff on the right. side, you know, and and he was just kind of there as a as a He a, really was. And he really was. And that's what they did with him, Tyrion. I mean, Tyrion's went from one of the great ones to being an idiot, and people hate that. And yeah. there's just so many things that went backwards this year. Yeah, and the last one. couple seasons it started, and uh, you know, and honestly, I d- I did defend them more in the past because I could forgive small things like time jumps, and because I get you can't show everybody traveling all the time. Right. But now, like Although this year, we would prefer that. Yeah, yeah. You get that in the real world they can't do yes, that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The right. audience, we would sit and watch them travel the whole way. Yeah, because the con- cause <laughs> that's some of the best conversations. It is. Like that first season when Robert and Right. But yeah, what doesn't work dance. this year is the pregnancies. There's all this time passing yeah. for traveling, but there's no baby bumps at all. Right. And, and then that's the other question. I don't know if we mentioned this. I know we're fixing to get out of here now, but Danny, baby? That looked like one to me. In that one, that one shot from the side yeah. did, but then I watched the other one where they get start to kiss, and it don't look like it at all. Wow! So, um, so it looks like maybe the scenes were shot out of order, and they did they were planning to do it, and then they backed out. I don't and, know. It's like they but, they threw this in our face for two seasons. You're right. This is the only children I can ever have. You're and so right. So, or is that going to be a big complication next week? Because if <sighs> if she can't, he if she knows if he knows that she's pregnant with his child. Holy shit. You can't kill her. Hell no. I mean, she, he's not going to... Would he? Would he do that? Would he Would he kill his own child? I don't want her bastard running around named Snow. Would he marry her? Then kill, I mean, I don't know. You I don't know. know. You got me speechless. I, it's crazy to think about. If anybody uh, would, for <laughs> some noble reason... Yeah, that's true. He would do it. Yeah, I uh, can't let... My, you know, yeah, this will be another crazy Targaryen. Yeah, dude. I don't know. That's, Not letting the gods flip a coin on this one. Exactly. That's, uh, that's horrible to think about, but we're going to find out in a couple of days for sure. Wow, Chris. Anyway, I guess we'll wrap this up. I think we're, what are we at, like an hour and 15 minutes or something? I think we did good on this one, man. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, I know it's so, so overused. But this whole thing's been bittersweet. <laughs> you know? Yes, indeed. Um, a lot more bitter lately, though, I guess, is what we're trying to say. Uh, anyway, uh, let us know what you think in the comments on YouTube. Uh, don't forget, this podcast is available on SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. So if you don't mind, if you listen to it there, uh, feel free to drop us a rating. Really help us out. Really appreciate it. be awesome. And... Um, yeah, we'll see about next week. Uh, again, we we said during the Game of Thrones season, we we couldn't do these every week, but this right. will become a regular weekly thing. So, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments too about upcoming uh, ideas for. Yeah. We had a thing last night where we were going to do something different. Um, maybe like questions that we, we could answer, like an a- AMA, ask us anything. I, I would like that because yeah. these, these podcasts do not have to be about TV or pop culture. They can be whatever. 
Yeah. So throw yeah. some ideas in there. Throw some ideas out there in the in the comments wherever you listen to this at and uh, be sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel if you are listening on another platform and, and there, that way you can comment there. We can see them all and uh, maybe we'll do um, the next, after we wrap up Game of Thrones and all this kind of stuff, uh, ask us anything type stuff or we'll answer your questions. That'd, that'd be, be, that'd so be cool. Fun. That'd yeah. be fun. Uh, anyway, uh, appreciate it guys. And I guess we'll just kind of let this uh, <laughs> let it fade, fade to black. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the whole, I did that video and started singing, damn, <laughs> for whom the bell tolls.